So my dear friends, it's time for another news update. All are welcome here. Ewoks, Wookiees, Twi'leks, Fruit Pastels and even your Nan. So without any more jibber jabber or jabber jibber or jibber jabber the hut, let's dive straight into it. Rise, Meg. The Force will be with you. Ortini! Ortini! So our first topic of conversation is going to be Grogu in The Mandalorian Season 3. I've spoken about this quite a bit on my channel in recent weeks, but Inverse have written a really good piece which is titled The Mandalorian Season 3 could reboot the show with one controversial change. And I will read it to you in a second, but the main gist is the idea that potentially Grogu is not going to return in the next season. He could return in season four. My own personal prediction is the fact that we could have two storylines running at the same time, where we see Luke Skywalker with Grogu and Din Djarin and the Darksaber Bo-Katan Mandalore. And these two stories are running at the same time and we cut to each one throughout season three. And then Din Djarin and Grogu will probably unite at the end of the season. But another option is the fact that Grogu is going to train under Luke for the entirety of the season and we won't see him again, at least until season four. I'm going to read to you from the article now, but I want to know what you guys think we can expect for season three. Do you think Grogu is going to return or not? I will also say that while you can make arguments on both sides, there is a big part of me that leans towards the fact that we will obviously see Grogu because he is a big cash cow for Disney. So let's dive into this article. What if the ending of The Mandalorian Season 2 was truly the end of Grogu? While it makes a certain amount of sense that the appearance of Luke Skywalker in the rescue is a happy cliffhanger, we might not be taking this big final scene at face value. We don't know what will happen in The Mandalorian Season 3, but show creator Jon Favreau did recently admit that incorporating Luke into the finale of Season 2 wasn't always in the cards. While that doesn't mean much for what's already happened, this kind of flexibility suggests that Grogu and Din Djarin's future is pretty much unpredictable. After all, we didn't even know Baby Yoda existed until The Mandalorian's first episode in 2019. But can the show exist without him? The idea that Din Djarin has parted with Grogu is heartbreaking on one level, but from a certain storytelling perspective, it's kind of liberating. Now, I very much agree with this point, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Generally speaking, one of the reasons you don't have action heroes driving around with infants and toddlers is because, of course, it's dangerous and narratively inconvenient. In The Mandalorian Season 1, there was a novelty to watching Mando figure out how to incorporate caring for a baby while being a bounty hunter. But in Season 2, The Mandalorian frequently got around this by letting Mando drop off Baby Yoda with other people on a regular basis. Yes, the search for a safe haven for Grogu drove the movements of Mando in both seasons. But by Season 2, Grogu was just kind of there a lot of the time. Those awesome force powers Baby Yoda used in Season 1 were mostly absent in the second season, making the character less of a person and more of a moving prop. And yet, The Mandalorian is still an action-adventure series, which means that unless Grogu has a massive growth spurt or starts using Jedi mind tricks to help Mando track down bounties, the show was stuck with a limited amount of plots. In real life, people with babies tend to quit doing whatever complicated or child-averse professional work they're in. If Mando was realistically going to become Grogu's full-time dad, he would have moved to Sorgon to settle down with Omera. In real life, this is what people do. For parallel Star Wars examples, look no further than every other parent in Star Wars. Galen Erso literally retired and hid his family away from the Empire. Bail Organa only let Leia start using blasters when she was a grown-up, and Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru did their best to give Luke a safe and urban life. Even Ben Kenobi tried to help. And this brings us on to our next point. The Mandalorian Season 3 without Grogu could feel a lot more like Star Wars. The larger point is probably becoming obvious. Darth Vader was able to be a space badass because he was unaware that he had children. Han Solo went back to being a space smuggler because his adult son turned to the dark side and became an evil warlord. So if you're going to have a show called The Mandalorian and there's going to be a whiff of realism, then Mando and Grogu can't be on the run forever. It's bad parenting and dull storytelling. All of this strongly suggests that The Mandalorian Season 3 could pull a soft reboot that didn't involve Grogu in any way, shape or form. In December of 2021, we're supposed to be getting the Book of Boba Fett, which in a way could prepare audiences for what a new bounty hunter-centric Star Wars show could be without a cute kid. If The Mandalorian Season 3 does manage to avoid bringing back Grogu at least for a little while, then suddenly the show could take off in an exciting new direction. So this is the point that I specifically agree with and I said I'd come back to it. 
Now evidently our Lord and Saviour John Favreau and Dave Filoni are obviously amazing writers and directors and I think they've already caught on to this. Temporarily removing Grogu can really help the show to breathe a little bit and take a new and exciting direction. I think if Grogu and Din Djarin reunite too soon in The Mandalorian Season 3, it's just going to feel too reminiscent of Season 2 and the show can't really go in an exciting new direction. I think what needs to happen is Mando to go on his own adventure to Mandalore with Bo-Katan. You know, maybe Bo-Katan is going to fight Din for the Darksaber. Maybe, like I said the other day, another challenger for the Darksaber might come along with an even more ancient Mandalorian relic like the Golden Mask. But time away from Grogu can really grow those individual plot lines. So while Grogu is training with Luke, he's becoming more established as a character. He's going to go through his own experiences. And with Mando and the Mandalore story, we can really get down to Mandalorian Creed and do just to the title of the series and in its turn in season 4 when they reunite they would have gone on so many adventures and developed further and we would have been along for the ride if that makes any sense. All I'm saying is that some time apart for these two characters are going to do them wonders but like I said what do you guys think of this idea? Will we see Grogu in season 3? Will we reunite with Din Djarin immediately or will some time pass? And so now my lovelies let's move on to our next article. This one is about Jedi Fallen Order 2, which will reportedly feature Darth Maul. Exciting stuff. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order 2 will apparently take place immediately after the events of the original game and feature a cameo from one of the franchise's most popular characters, Maul himself. We don't know if this is confirmed yet, but it's certainly a rumour that's gaining increased traction amongst reputable sources. As I say with all rumours guys, take it or leave it, take it with a pinch of salt, believe it, don't believe it, make of it what you will, I think this would be really exciting if it did come true. And so my friends, our final piece of news is about how Katie Sackhoff joked her way into season 2 of Mando. Lifelong Star Wars fan Katie Sackhoff, who voiced Bo-Katan in the animated series, revealed that she sort of manifested reprising the role of Bo-Katan in live action. Whilst recording the voice for The Clone Wars, she often joked with Dave Filoni about one day making it happen, and of course they're referring to turning her into a live action character. And in her words, she said, you know, one day if this happens, she could exist in these worlds. I always joked with Dave because I never thought it would happen. She even thought her character would be recast and she thought they'd hire Scarlett Johansson or quote unquote, someone like that. And I will just add that Katie Sackhoff seems like such a wonderful person. I've seen interviews with her and I simply love her positivity and I'm really happy for her that she got to see her character being turned into live action. And it's really cool that she played the live action role as well as voiced the character. I mean, who knows Bo-Katan better than Katie Sackhoff herself? So that's really awesome. So that is all of the news I have for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also give the notification bell a good old tickle. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a phenomenal day.